everyone and happy Saturday and we are back for week 41 and um, have some fun things in store. It'll be a little different but uh, yeah when I read what our prompt is you'll understand why I have these pods um, here. So number 41 is gratitude for the elements of nature. How many times have we given pause to think about the elements of nature that allow for our art making. We are very familiar with and use regularly the elements of art, line, shape, color, texture, etc. Yet seldom have I stopped and just thought about the water, wood, plants, animals, minerals, earth, and found objects, objects that bless us with materials to create. I mean, this when I first had that thought a number of years back, it really caused me to pause. I'm like, you know, <clears throat> I'm thankful for, you know, certain things that you know shape our our design like line texture and have you but like what about the things that are organic to our work so of course i carry as i'm sure you do as well an overall spirit of appreciation such as when i find a feather a seed pod or twine and brush to make a new mark making tool Yet full-blown gratitude is something that I have only recently begun to ponder. The idea that these objects are not just sentient or insentient, but they also convey information and represent themselves. This matters. I think about the too many times that I found a rock and began to share a story with, uh, found a rock that began to share a story with me as I tumbled it in my hand and contemplated its usage in a collage or assemblage. You know, so sometimes you get something and like a whole story starts developing. Where does that come from? You know, um, somewhere in between our interaction with this pod and the pod itself, this story is created and develops. Um, as we explore our personal art mythos more deeply, I believe that looking at our interaction with nature is vital. We are returning to our roots. This is a return this return is bringing us much closer to our ancestors and the ways of relating to the land. The many, many stories that have survived time that we carry as a part of our ancestral histories have done so through these textual materials. Many of our stories are remembered as we pick up an object that is passed that was passed down to us. I'm suggesting that the found objects in nature, the water with its powers of memory and communication that we use to mix our paints or the wood, which forms the handles on our paintbrushes, allows the trees and its memories to live on. The feather shed from the bird tells us of lands it has seen, and the resilient hairs that make up the bristles of our paint paintbrushes tell the herd stories of movement over land and through remote forests. This week, as you use your materials, observe your responses and feelings of gratitude for the elements of nature that have come together in a shared exchange. Experience the gratitude that wells up and pay attention to the stories that are released. How does this newfound coll collaboration impact your work? Maybe even the way you work. As we carry on with our playtime in our studios over the next several weeks, <clears throat> Excuse me, we'll be ever mindful of these special elementals. Let's make gentle observations as we move forward and we will begin to dive deeper into the powers of each of the elements of nature, seeing how many we can find that were previously unobserved. My heart is filled with gratitude because I know that our stories are expanding and we are connecting more deeply with that which motivates our passions. So, yeah, so this week is just a general overall um, connection and observation to, to this. Maybe things you've already thought of before and then maybe observing how many new things you hadn't thought about or connected to in nature. And that how many of our, you know, our brushes, like, you know, one of my favorite brushes comes from Siberian, the hairs of Siberian um, elk and the br the br the um <clears throat> the handle is a piece of bamboo, you know, and I've had this for over 30 years. So everything about these natural materials <clears throat> are living on, you know, and have expression in my scripting. 
So it's like just looking around us. Every time we take a bottle of water and pour it to mix our paints, you know, that wouldn't be possible without this element of water in our lives. So it's just something that's a new way or maybe a different way of thinking about things that are familiar, right? <clears throat> so yeah, I love, I love this. And it, you know, and it started, of course, this, this step, this next seven weeks began with, um, Archaeomythology, the idea of telling stories with textural materials, which is what archaeomythology is. Um, and now we're sort of moving into, you know, just discovering all these sort of materials and textual aspects of nature as we go on this next journey for the next um, seven weeks. So, yeah, I, I love this. This is one of my favorite um, sections of this journey. So let me show you what what came of last week. So this page we did together. And then I came back and did this page. Um, and then on Patreon, we did this page spread. And so I treated this as an entire page spread. Now I used all of those um, symbols and stuff that we made with the tissue paper. So all of this is using that. I didn't use anything different from just all the fragments that we made um, is what is used here. So I did this, I treated this as an entire page spread and I really liked that because it kind of felt like more of like a cave wall or you know a larger expanse in which um, a story is being told on. And then I did this one. So this is, it's a lot of subtle layers there. But these are all of those pieces of um, tissue paper that we um, stenciled on. And it's amazing how it all just disappears. You can, uh, that's why I like stenciling and doing those, what I call those fragments, because you can use these in just complex layered collages and um, they really do come to life. So after I did these two, I came back here again and they were just two separate pages. Because I had already done this one, and then this one was just done separately. And I liked it looking like one piece. So I came back and took the dotted pattern and put it right down the middle. And then put this circle over it as a way to kind of bring harmony and bring those two spreads together so they looked like one spread. So that's things you can do with your pages as well. Um, just to kind of lend that, that continuity. So there we have it. Um... That's everything. Oh, we also will be working with this month's printables, October printables. And I, this month I took all, so many of the backgrounds that, that I made. Some of them I made with you all. Some I made with my patrons. And I just made them into a pack of all these really rich textural backgrounds that can be used in so many kinds of projects. And so many people ask me about my pages so I thought I would offer them up and this one is from a large painting that I did I just love I just love how all of this comes together this texture so yeah that so that's so we'll start working with this um, today in sort of a collage style I have I have a few ideas it's gonna kind of go back to sort of like this kind of idea let's just work with um this kind of contained textural element so we'll be down to the table i think that's everything the links for the printables are underneath the video uh, in the video description underneath the video i always put that there and all the products that i'm using you'll find over there as well as the upcoming workshops those have been doing great we've been having so much fun oh my goodness over on zoom so those links are there if you want to join in. And I think that's everything that I normally get asked questions on. So we'll be down to the table shortly. Okay, so here we are. Let's first, um, before I decide how I'm going to use these, let's first make some papers that I know I want to use to go along with them. So I'm going to take some tissue paper. And I have these pods. I just find these on the ground. I love them. I use all kind of pods. Like I, this is another one, this type. 
um, they normally look like this. I have some up here that are not painted. They're like these and they kind of like open like that. And I love spray painting them in the gold. And then this has like a little pearl inside of it, a little freshwater pearl. And so these just become elements for collage in my larger collage pieces. Um, I use this, I like this Rust-Oleum in the spray paint. You can either spray paint them, which and the, this one that I just showed you is, is spray painted with the Rust-Oleum. <clears throat> um, or you can paint them with the Golden's Iridescent Bronze, which is what we're going to do today. Um, and so, yeah, let's get started. So we're going to put that up there. <clears throat> so I kind of just use my jelly plate because we're going to use a jelly plate anyway. So just kind of getting some paint and uh, probably just going to use the front side of this. So I'm not going to waste paint on the back. It's just kind of really smooth it on there. When it dries, it just dries so beautifully. that there and I'll do another one and you can do this with anything you find that you want to use I just like incorporating these natural elements in my in my collages and though I'm putting this in this book this book is not going to be it's at the beginning so it's not going to kind of get in the way and these are pretty flat, so. Um, so now let's go ahead and want to print up this sheet. So I want to use kind of more painterly kind of strokes. So kind of creating a <clears throat> sort of a background paper that I'll be using along with these uh, and we've made so many background papers that you'll have a lot of your other ones that you've made um, <clears throat> like on tissue paper to do this with or you can always make more. Okay, so get some more down here. Just as opposed to rolling it out, I just want a little bit more lift and texture on the print. So then I just kind of use a paintbrush to do that. Okay. And you know, you might say, well, couldn't you just paint right on the paper? Sure you can. You know, but we know with the jelly plate, you just get really thin layers of color. So it's not so thick. But you certainly could just paint right on the paper if you wanted to. Or for those of you who don't have a jelly plate, you can just... I'm kind of layering now. Just to get some extra layer on here. Get a little bit more. I think what I'm going to do is this here. Okay. Just kind of want to get all the way to the edges since I'm pr printing it. I might as well, right? Get it all. Okay. I think what I'm going to do is 
because I'm probably going to want a piece that, let me just fill it more down. Um, I'm going to make a couple of collages, so I'm going to use some quinacridone on the other half of it. So I can have a couple of different golds going here. Okay, so let me get some quinacridone here. Put that down a little bit on the plate. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Alrighty. I'm throwing t paintbrushes around the place. <clears throat> okay. So you can see this is just kind of makes a more orange gold, and this is sort of a gold. A gold gold, <laughs> or I guess a bronze gold. No, we don't want that. I want to do another layer of this, and then I can let this <clears throat> paper rest a little bit. Just want to get a little more color on here. Oh, I know what I also want to do. Once I decide which paper... We're going to do a glaze on it. Or we can do a matte medium, too. Okay. There. Let's put this on here. And the more paint that builds up on this paper, actually, the stronger it gets. Okay, perfect. So that's good. So we're going to let that dry there and <clears throat> let me just get so much paint on here let me just pull this on a plain piece of paper no need to waste the paint so we can use this too So that's good. So we'll do a little staining on that, and that really is perfection. <clears throat> Just do some coffee staining or something on it. And then those marks will be there like that. So we have that. Now, come back over here. And let me see what I want to, which of these images I want to work with. Might want to work with this bit here. So I'm just kind of seeing how I'm going to incorporate. So I might work with that. Or do I want to work with this? Or well, maybe this piece here. So I'm going to do two of these. <clears throat> um, just pull from something a little different. Ooh. Use this one. Okay, let's use these two sheets to start with. And I may come back and get some of that scripting too. So I'm going to I'm going to work on both sides of this, and we're going to kind of incorporate some of natural stuff. I wonder if I have. I normally always have all kinds of stuff. <clears throat> but let me keep focus. We're gonna we're gonna do this right now. Okay, so let's see this piece. 
Let me go ahead and tear <clears throat> these edges off. Okay. So I want to work with this piece. I want to kind of figure it. I'm not going to try to have it take up the whole page because I'm going to use it as an element. So maybe to here. And I really like how this is bleeding down there. Um, let me go ahead and grab like mm, that. Let's kind of grab this off of here. Just kind of working in my mind's eye right now in terms of what I'm sort of seeing here. Right there. Let's get rid of this. So this could kind of this piece I really like that bit of it so okay so I'm going to just so there's two things we can do here we can use you can either use a glaze medium like I like to use a lot which is um, something like like this metallic in the um, champagne and it'll put a little luster on it um, or we can also take a matte medium let me get a brayer and what it's going to do it's going to kind of give this paper a little texture like paint or like a jelly print type of feel to it and it'll kind of protect your image so you just want to roll out a very thin bit of it. And I'm okay with just paint on the plate because if I pick up little bits and pieces, I'm okay with that. It just adds more of that old wall jelly printed kind of look to it. Just make good contact. And then pull it. And basically what we have, see how it pulled up? some of that paint so it really kind of gives it a sort of a jelly printed look we know that this image isn't jelly printed but it adds that layer of printing to it so that it looks more painterly it'll blend in more while we're working with these other paints so do this again so this is just a a handy little technique you can do, especially because I have my prints are also um, are <clears throat> inkjet. They're not lasers, so they can um, run or bleed. So I oftentimes I use this, and it just locks the prints in as well. The you know the ink onto the paper. So I like to, I do it for two reasons. I like the texture, and it also just gives a little bit more protection to the image well it gives a lot more because it basically just locks in so we'll do it again and this i'm using a matte so <clears throat> it's not going to be shiny if you wanted to use a gloss medium you could but i kind of like using the matte for this I'm going to get this top half now. Okay. Yeah, that's good. See how it picks up. That gold got on there nicely. <clears throat> I 
<clears throat> so see how I picked up the gold too? That's nice. Okay, so I think I also am going to grab, in my mind, I can see a little bit of the scripting here. So let's grab some of it as an element. And I want to go ahead and do the same thing. It's a lot on there. We don't need that much. Just really want thin layers. It's easy to put more on. It's harder to take it off. Okay, so let's go ahead and put this down. So that little extra paint on there serves us. Oh wow, I like that. See how we got that gold along the bottom there? <clears throat> so we're going to just kind of do an assemblage style collage here, just building up the textures and then using those pods. This is good to, you know, kind of you could focus on um, um, stones or small feathers, things like that that you want to use as a part of your kind of connecting with nature. And I'm, I normally have lots of small um, feathers and stuff. I'm trying to see if I have any. I can put my hand right on. <clears throat> of course, today. I would find, oh, wait a minute. I want to find the little ones. I have a number of them here, but. Like this little one probably could be good. Good. Let's work with that one. A lot of times I fall, find them even smaller than that. <clears throat> oh, wait, here's some. I have a drawer of all of this kind of stuff. <laughs> What kind of feathers, old book things. This is all my collage stuff. Oh, this is a good one. I think this one is a good one. A fallen feather never gets by me. I am constantly picking them up when I see them. I just like the patterns in them and so we'll we'll fool with one of these for sure. Probably the smaller ones. Okay. Good. Okay, so how are we doing? Great. Now let's see. Let's see how we're gonna construct this. Put it all together. Okay, so we're going to use this. So now let's get this. This is dry now. Um, go ahead and crumple it. You know I was going to do that. And I'm just kind of showing you some, you know, just easy. You could work with things that are um, things you are, you know, how we just use things we already have, the tissue paper and stuff. And then, oh, this is really, look how good that looks. That really pops. Mm. So I think I'm going to use this one over on this side. So if I use this as a foundation piece, maybe... Let me just rip this. Just take some of this off. Just see how we want to do this. Does this look just like that paper that you get at the um, at Blick or somewhere like that? That more expensive um, paper. Have you guys seen that before? You know, it's like 
12 or 14 15 dollars a sheet and uh, yeah this so here I'm just kind of working on how I would build up color and texture sort of thinking it through I want a little bit of this let me just see I never know I just kind of kind of eyeball my way through it so let's just do this And so with this, let's just, uh, and of course I'm going to crumple this. It's already a piece of that was crumpled. So you can go back and crumple these prints <clears throat> to kind of get some texture back in them. And so you have the visual texture from the reproduction and also actual texture. Well, I like that. Let's see, so I just, and with that, matte medium on there it gives it like a texture that feels very painterly so something building up something like that is fun and I'm going to do something to that background okay so that's one let's work on this one okay let's take this here That'll go down. And let's see. Do a similar thing. Grab some of this. So let's go ahead and rip this free edge. So we can do something like that. So I want to use this pod. So we need to put, let's go through our pack and see what else we want to put. And actually, try this. I could use a bit of this in here. Let's do that. Oftentimes when I'm working with images across, you know, the page from each other, I kind of like to make them kind of tell a similar story so I'll use um, similar elements so this we have at the bottom oh, I love that right there so this right here just becomes another element oh that's nice so it's just like puzzles. Just have fun with uh, ripping things up. If you use the printables, if you use your own things, and I encourage you to reproduce. Oh, see, I love that. I just think that's so elegant. And but I want to see. I always have like goodies stuck away in my my drawers here. Sometimes I'll have something else. Let me just add a nice little bit of texture. Like this is um, tracing paper. Actually, this original image here is done on. What oh, was that on tracing paper of that done on? I might have done, actually done this on um, on the glass scene. I like this little bit here. I think I might just get just a little bit of um, without any of the image. Just to kind of. to do it there do I want to do it here well, I like that there I think I want to put it right in here and I'll just add another bit of texture and so really with this type of collaging you just want to keep on building up texture 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 you know it's all about the layers right and here and there's always like a little bit like I'll go in my drawer here and find a little piece of 
Asian paper scraps or something to use. And also, I know sometimes people will say, oh, you're using, um, you know, stuff from your collection. What happens if you don't have, um, let me just see this. If you don't have any of these vintage papers, well, a lot of these on, there's a lot of sites out there that you can just like get paper like this. I mean, this happens to be a yellow. You can get it in cream like this is cream. These are all new papers. So you could get these. Uh, that's one place I think called Mar, Mar um, what is it? Mulberry. I think it's called mulberrypapers.com or something like that. They sell a lot of these papers. And sometimes they even sell packs where there are like just bits and pieces in them and you can get a whole collection for you know not that much so yeah it's you know there's a lot of neat um because i so do i want to add this here like that as a finish to that one or do i actually i wanted to put some paint there but i feel like i want to use a little something Okay, this piece would be good. This is really, because I want to kind of put something here. So let me rip this. And, you know, like sometimes when you're out, if you go to, if you like going to flea markets, look for old papers. They're always some to be found. And even if you're looking for, um, Um, in books, sometimes in, in like in books, you'll, it's amazing how you'll find, oh, this is perfect. You'll find, um, books that'll have images of, um, of scripting in there that you could even reproduce or actually tear. See, I like that. So what do I want to do over here? I want to add something else. Okay, so what we're going to do, let's go ahead and start gluing these down because I've kind of gotten everything to a place where I know this is what I want to do. And so I just love this paper. Oh my goodness, just out of that, that acid-free tissue paper we've been using. Just pull out your golds and have at it. Okay, so for this one, let me see. Let me... Start it again because it was about ready to end. Let me get. What did I do with my glue book? I have moved it off of my desk in some sort of cleanup frenzy, and now I don't know where it is. Okay, so let's get our glue sticks. And this one I'm going to put full down on the page like that because it covers most of the page, and I could do some kind of background, but um, I like that as it is. So let's go ahead and put this down. So probably many of you already have so many found objects or even if you um, take and dry some leaves between old books, let that set up for you. And then, um, oh, wait a minute, did I? Yeah, it's fine. Um, and, uh, you know, use that, that sort of fauna. On your, um, but it's just challenging ourselves to use some natural elements in our journals this week. Looks like I got that pretty straight. Yeah. Oh, that's my puppy. She's stretching in her sleep. Okay, so now let's go back and get this. Now, I don't want this to be flat, flat. You already probably know that. So I'm just going to put a little bit right here in the middle. But I want those ends to stay crinkled. But let me make sure I get this right. So I want that down there. I think that looks a little low. Let's kind of move it up. Okay. So put that there. 
And then this piece I'm going to put down here. So same thing. I'm just going to put a light bit of glue on it. I'm not going to try to get it so that I want it to sort of have a little bit of, you know, space around everything. This will go underneath there. So let me, I can use the Giotto for this too. Okay. And this kind of just gives a little extra texture. It blends in <coughs> with the background and it's translucent so you can still see the other <coughs> underneath it. This is good. And so this I'll just put, I'll use the Uhu and I'm just going to kind of just do a, just a bit sort of right in the middle too so that the edges are free. I just like doing it like that. I feel like it gives dimension to your your prints without everything sort of going to let that really set up. Yep. So there we have it. And then this goes <coughs> down on top. It's just yummy. So we're going to use our PVA, um, which is our polyvinyl acetate. comes like this. It's ideal for book binding and stuff like that. But that's how it looks. I'll make sure I put the links. You can get it on Amazon. So just get a nice little dollop on there and you can also use if you have um, put this down here we're just going to let it sit it's going to take a, a, a while to set up but when it does it's going to be good you can also use Fabri-Tac so whatever you have that's a really nice weighted glue so we can see that so that little We've just taken that little pod that, you know, started off this looking like this and elevating it into a really fine element for collaging. And it still has that really natural kind of look to it. So, yeah, you don't have to go far to find good stuff. <clears throat> so on this side, what I want to do is I just want to take some black paint first. And I'm just going to scribe a little bit of paint as a background. I like to do this too when I'm doing collages. So just get some on there. And uh, just kind of pulling it down until you get something that Kind of creates an interesting background that you like. You can kind of keep on laying it down to see. So I definitely wanted to come down a little further. I like it to kind of create these empty sp spaces. You can also take it up in a different direction. Okay, so I definitely want it to, um, yeah, see, that just gives it a nice bit of interest. And to kind of get it to dry a little faster, you can just kind of tap it and pull off some of that paint. Okay. I'll just get it to dry faster. We can kind of move on here, but you know, you can also just let it 
sit to. Okay. Now, this I want to glue down here. So I'm going to just glue, glue this down pretty flat. I want to get this piece flat up against that, that black background. So I'm going to use the Giotto. Oops. Really flatten that. Hmm. This, this Giotto glue is pretty aggressive. It glues to itself. Okay. Alrighty. Okay, so. Trying to keep everything right in the camera here it can be challenging at times. Let's go ahead and put that down like right about there. So I love that. Use the card just to spread it down. Okay, so see how that just kind of starts blending with that background nicely. Because with this, you know, this sort of mottled effect in the background it sort of picks up the black and white of this and just kind of gives it a nice kind of background so then we're going to take this and put this down so same thing I just kind of want to get just a little bit in the middle Okay, it's looking good. Let's get this same thing. Let me turn my phone off. So let's get this in here. And I do want to see if I could find something else. So we'll put that feather down. Since I have a little bit of this sort of Asian scripting there, I feel like I want to put something. So let's go looking back in here. See what we can find. Um, sort of have these pieces. Now I want something subtle, so I think I'll stick with this. Just tear a bit of this and figure out where I'm going to put it. Okay. So we can kind of, a lot of times, I'll just run a little strip right underneath there. And it just gives a little extra bit of line to what we're doing. So let's just go ahead and get some glue on this piece. So yeah, just some fun collages, putting a little bit of elements of nature. So anything you see, like it'll, this will make you start looking differently at what, <laughs> at what you walk by on the ground, that's for sure. I know it does with me. Oh, yeah, I like that. Definitely don't just walk by, you know, pods and stuff any longer. I'm always thinking, I wonder what they'll look like painted. Okay, so with this, I'm going to use a little bit of Fabri-Tac because it'll give a nice, pretty quick uh, bind. And because we have just about the space of this piece right here, so I'm going to... Just get, and it dries clear too, which is nice. 
we can get this down. So I'm just going to kind of put it. I can get this. It's like taking forever. I think I need to get some more glue. When it's settled, it's a lot in there. It just it takes forever to come to here. It comes down. So. I need to make a little hole. Where's my all? There it is. Just need a little opening there. So just kind of put it right behind where the feathers start. This is generally the highest part of the stem. So it makes good contact and any extra glue that you get kind of can hide behind the feathers a bit. So I'd probably just put just about that much, you know, from, from here to about there. It's kind of hard for it to focus because it's all clear, but. Okay, so let's get this down. Like right there is good. And we'll just let that set up. And yeah, we have a feather and we have a pod and uh, some printables and, you know, any jelly prints that you already have or any of your images or things out of, you know, magazines or take in, you know, some of your favorite papers that you've created from our um, mark making and staining um, sessions and then photocopy those. So here we are. So this is kind of what we end up with. And I love this type of collaging. Just kind of building up layers. And you get something that's elegant. It's like a frame. Um, over here the same thing. And these are just papers we've made except for these but you can even find stuff like this in books and my October printables from last year has lots of um, Asian scripting in there so I'm going to put that underneath the video too so if you want this kind of look that pack has tons I put a lot of in fact I, I said I was going to do another one because I have a lot more of this kind of Asian vintage papers I have to remember to try to do that maybe for next month but I'll put the link for the last month's last year's October, um, if you want to have some of the same sort of thing. But there we have it. So, yeah, get out and take, have a walk and, you know, in your yard, in your garden, around, you know, around your neighborhood. This is a time of year when trees start, you know, especially in the Western Hemisphere, where you're getting, um, we're getting going into fall, trees are dropping their pods flowers, everything. This is a good time to harvest a lot of things. Keep them over the winter so that you can paint them up. I just love it. It just, like looking at it right off, you wouldn't think that it's a pod. I mean, it has a pod look, but you wouldn't think that it necessarily looked like this. You know what I mean? So, anyway. Hope you guys enjoyed that. If you liked the video, please thumb it up. Um, I always look forward to your comments. If you're new to the channel, Hit the subscribe button and um, make sure you hit the bell that says all. That way you get your notifications when I put videos up every Saturday at 7 a.m. Pacific time. Um, and yeah, so have a great week. And remember our prompt, you know, just kind of focusing in on nature. And I think that's everything. So take care. Have a happy Saturday. And I'll see you next week. And I'll look forward to your comments and, you know, just sharing with me the things that you guys are doing. I really look forward to um, those every Saturday as well. All right. Take care. Love you all. Bye-bye.